Nick Jill down the back straight. Alfie Costanzo, uh, in fact, has got Mars Warwick Brown. So our new race leader is Alfie Costanzo off the oval into the main straight. A few lengths clear of Warwick Brown. Uh, as you know, we come from Italy with a family. When we came here, uh, we came with intention to work, save money and buy a house. But my intention was uh, to, to race cars, to become a racing car driver. And uh, my father couldn't understand because the way we come from the south of Italy, uh, we didn't have many cars. So uh, sometimes he was wondering where the hell I, I came from. Anyway, uh, it took me a while to eventually understand the game, uh, do with my own money, which it wasn't uh, easy doing, to do. But uh, I did, I gained a lot of experience. Uh, and then, of course, uh, I suppose in somehow I must have been uh, noticed by uh, other people that uh, uh, I could be a good rising car driver. And uh, my friend Eddie Hamilton uh, presented me with a car that uh, gave me the chance to win uh, four national championships. And uh, he still provided me with a car. We are here. As I said, uh, I shouldn't be here because I'm 71. But uh, we, I enjoy it. My, uh, the boss enjoys it. Uh, we got three children in my family, eight grandchildren. I play a bit of golf, I play a bit of tennis. Uh, we're happy. Uh, what, else, what else do I want? So I, I'm here with this. I'll pick this down, so through the S's. We'll wait now and see whether he can open up any sort of a gap on Warwick. Which he is doing, in fact, even at this early stage. Look at the gap he's pulled out on Warwick Brown and look how Lees is hammering Brown. So perhaps Brown has got tyre problems. Certainly, Costanzo is pulling away even at this time. He will have pulled out more than half a second on this one lap, although through the banking, uh, Brown gets through, the, through there very quickly and pulls out quite a bit of ground on both Lees and pulls in ground on Alf Costanzo. Costanzo, all eight and a half stone of him, he's jockey-sized, uh, roaring away in that car number 84, the Alan Hamilton Nola, and putting a little bit more of a gap now into Warwick Brown. There's about 50 metres between himself and Brown, and another 50 metres back to Jeff Lees in car number 8, the Formula One ensign. A great credit to Costanzo, the way he's been performing last weekend in this, and for that matter, the way he performed, subject to mechanical problems in last year's series, because he probably only gets about seven or eight or nine races a year at the very most and very few drivers can maintain race winning form on that sort of infrequency but Alfie does it he's absolutely flying and he said last week when questioned about it oh he said 10 laps and I'm back in the groove I know exactly where to break turn into the corners and everything I've got everything right and in fact it is Costanzo pulling inch by inch away from Brown on the faster sections of the circuit but around this banked oval section if Brown closes up picks up perhaps 10 or 15 metres, but Alfie in the Alan Hamilton Lola, comfortably in front. Warwick Brown still in second position, car 111, and Jeff Lee's back in third. Alfie Costanzo on his way perhaps to his second successive win in the 1979 Rothmans International Series. And after 10 laps, there are our placings. Alfie Costanzo, car 84, leading from Warwick Brown, car 111, and Jeff Lee's car number eight, going through the very fast, but uh, you must watch it, S section at the back of the circuit. The uh, gap from first to second is very small indeed, as Costanzo looks very good. At Sandown, he judged his race beautifully. He was able to maintain a good buffer between himself and his fellow competitors, and any time they pulled out any ground on him, he was able to uh, reply very quickly on the next lap. And our race leader, full flight down the back straight with a wall of cars behind him is to check on the placings after 20 laps Costanzo still leading from Warwick Brown and Jeff Lees now coming on to the straightaway again to close up on an ailing Colin Bond a great gaggle of cars behind Costanzo is, has everything going for him he's got a clear track he seems to be avoiding all the uh, cars being lapped Warwick Brown in fact we know is being held up back in the traffic Costanzo now would be a good 200 all on meters in front I wonder if the hero of the Melbourne crowds and fast becoming the hero of the Rothman series crowds can do it again. Alfie Costanzo isn't just a top racing driver today, he's incredibly lucky. All the way around the circuit he's managed to get to corners just ahead of the cars being lapped. He's had virtually a clear run for the last 10 or 15 laps, while Warwick Brown continually has been running into thick traffic and losing ground. It's 5.5 seconds, in fact, the gap between those two, Costanzo and Brown. Alf getting a, <laughs> a good run through there, but helped a bit by forcing his way through and making it pretty apparent to the Barana that he was lapping at Creasy from Western Australia. But uh, 
he was coming through irrespective and Creasy of course had seen him in the mirrors and moved out pretty wide to let him through. So Alf strides off down the straight with this lead after 20, 30 laps now on his 31st in a 50 lap race of five and a half seconds over Warwick Brown in second place whose lead over Jeff Lees is about one second. After 30 laps, that's the situation in this 50 lap second round of the Rutgers International Series for Stanzo, Brown and Lees. There's been that situation for about the about the last 20 or so laps. Costanzo probably feeling super confident. He knows now he can win these races with uh, not too much trouble. There's still a tremendous amount of interest in this race. Costanzo being chased, hotly pursued by Jeff Lees, but possibly the uh, race is too close to the finish for Jeff Lees to do much about it. Costanzo has uh, quite an enormous lead, and Will Hagen has just checked it. He's pulled in a second, 8.2 seconds now, first to second place. It's less than a second a lap, and that's easily achievable under these conditions. So Alfie Costanza, he'll be advised by his pits at Sandown last weekend when this happened. He usually replied by pulling out another second on the following lap, which would be this one. But let's see what he does. We'll get a gap on the next lap. But Costanzo now trying as cleanly and as efficiently as possible to go quickly without overstraining the car. There's the latest up to date with 10 laps to go. Alfie Costanzo, our leader in car 84, Larry Perkins running second in the answer team Elfin car 12 and Johnny Walker, the Adelaide star car 25 running in third position. Well, Alfie Costanzo is now to have a break or something uh, technically or mechanically amiss to lose this race. Indeed. And, uh, it's, it would be awfully funny to see his team mentor, the man that put him into the car, uh, Alan Hamilton down the pits, because only about five laps into the race last weekend, Hamilton was storming around with Alf out front, lots of pressure from behind, saying, I can't stand it. I, uh, the whole race of waiting for something to go wrong, now he's on again, and of course he's faced with the possibility of running the next two races up at the front, and whilst it's not bad in one way, uh, you're always in the highest of hopes if you're out in front. And of course, if something does go wrong, it seems even more cruel. So with eight laps to go, Costanzo out in front, doing it absolutely beautifully. That's second place, Larry Perkins. Uh, but in the pits, Alan Hamilton, his team sponsor and, and the owner of the car, chewing his fingernails right down to the quick, I would say, <laughs> wondering if everything's going to stay okay in that car. This would be, without a doubt, the best Formula 5000 car running in Australia. Without a doubt. As Alfie Costanzo describes it, it's, it's the Rolls-Royce of Formula 5000 racing. Costanzo is about to commence his final lap. He's completed 49, he's out on his final. Alf Costanzo now almost assured of victory, barring some cruel stroke of fate. And it was a fairly cruel one that took victory from him at Sandown, only three laps from the end a year ago. So, um, in the, the ways of the vagaries, as you were saying, Jim, of motorsport, something could happen. Let's watch him on this final lap as he goes on his winning way and have a look at the winning lines that he's been taking around the circuit as he comes through Shell into the Uni Royal S's, lines up then to come onto this reverse camber BP corner, keeps it in tight, sacrifices that corner somewhat to get onto Goodyear corner Motorcraft, the banking quickly comes round onto Motorcraft corner, the first part of the real banking. Then to Stillwell, the chequered flag awaits him and it's Alfie Costanzo, second victory in two weekends and again a very, very well deserved one for him and for the Porsche Cars Australia team. Costanzo co cooling down around the back of the circuit and another finely judged, skillfully driven race from the pint-sized and uh, very lovable Italian-born Melbourne resident Alf Costanzo. A very likeable chap. No pretense about him at all. Last week, people with the Formula One boys were talking about, I need more wing and I need more time to sort this, that and the other. And Alf, in his uh, lovely Italian accent, said, they are too scientific for me. I just get in and drive. And he's done that uh, absolutely superbly two weekends in a row. Well, there he is. He'll be so delighted, Alfie Costanzo. He's a terribly emotional little man. All eight and a half stone of him. And... Uh, 
getting out of his car, he'll be drenched with perspiration and he always claims that he loses something like a half a stone. It's impossible to believe when you look at him there uh, in a race of this type, particularly uh, on a hot day. And boy, has it been hot today, well over the century. I never become a world champion as I was uh, hoping to. But uh, I won a uh, championship that uh, other people were dreaming the same way and I never did that. I got a beautiful family, three children, eight grandchildren. Uh, I'm 71, I play golf, I play tennis. Uh, what more do I need? So I'm happy.